So in, in family law, you're dealing with so many different people with so many different emotions. Yeah. How do you manage these emotions so it doesn't affect you personally? Yeah, well, the first thing to say is that it is an inherently emotional area that's often because you're not just dealing with the breakdown of the relationship itself, but it's the uncertainty that goes alongside that. Um, so one or both of the parties, they may have been happy to a degree in the relationship up until a certain point, and then suddenly the future that they envisage, both um, financially is up in the air, and often the nature and extent of the relationship they have with their children is a lot more uncertain, and actually the person who they were most close to previously is the person who they're now in often a fairly contentious, hostile, battle with. So um, it is emotional for that reason. I think what I try and consciously do is not get too emotionally invested in my client's own story. I have to engage with it in a very empathetic way, but not to become a formal counsellor. And it's about trying to maintain a balance between having that level of empathy to understand where they're coming from, what's important to them and uh, maintaining a professional distance. I think in practice one way of doing that as well is to have a mentor, whether that's uh, the barrister that you're working on a particular case or um, colleagues around you, or um, even if it's just a, a friend outside the law, family law war stories are always pretty interesting to listen to, so you won't, it, it, no one will have any difficulty in getting someone to, to hear those stories which may just allow you to bounce off some ideas or let off steam at the end of the day.